This video is an introduction to the topic, how does a compass work? In this topic of everyday physics, we're going to be considering the question, how does a compass work? Compasses are very old pieces of technology. When they were discovered, it was a great leap forward in navigation, as it meant that no matter where you were, you could always know where north was. So a compass is basically a small magnet which is free to move. And so this allows that magnet to align with the Earth's magnetic field and so point in a generally northward direction. So in this series of lectures, we're going to start by considering the properties of magnets. So we'll be comparing some of these properties to the properties of electric charges. So we'll be looking at how we can represent magnetic field lines with a diagram and then we're going to have a look at how magnets interact with each other. Next we're going to be considering the Earth's magnetic field. This is important because it's a small magnet aligning in the Earth's magnetic field which describes how a compass works. As we'll see, the Earth is effectively a very large bar magnet. This magnetism actually comes about because of electric currents which flow in the outer core of the Earth. So the Earth's magnetic field not only is responsible for making compasses work, it also protects us from cosmic rays which could cause injury to us and also to our technology. It also helps a few animals navigate. Some animals have been shown to be able to detect the magnetic field of the Earth and use this to work out the best way to migrate, say. And finally, the magnetic field lines are also responsible for the southern lights known as the aurora australis and also the northern lights in the northern hemisphere. So as we'll be seeing in the last video in this topic, there's actually deep links between electricity and magnetism. These deep links were discovered or at least well formulated by Maxwell in his theory of electromagnetism. Maxwell managed to show that electricity and magnetism were deeply linked and were actually two facets of the same force. And this led to a great leap forwards in physics where physicists started looking for grand unified theories that could unify all the fundamental forces of nature. So we're going to have a look at how we can calculate the force felt by a charged particle in a magnetic field. In order to describe this force, you're going to need to learn about the right hand rule. We're then going to consider how current carrying wires produce a magnetic field. And this magnetic field means that parallel wires can attract or repel each other depending on the direction the current's flowing. And it also means that it's possible to construct what's called electromagnets, which are magnets can, that can be turned off and turned on, which is very useful in things like car scrapyards, where you want a magnetic field at some p periods of time, but not at others. So I hope that you enjoy this topic and that you learn a lot from it. Watch the videos and then have a go at the tutorial problems. So a special thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this. The image of the Aurora Australis in Antarctica was taken by Samuel Blank and is used under the Creative Commons license.